Welcome to this webinar on the topic of advancing analytics maturity with an intelligent data catalog. I am Dharma Kuthanur, Senior Director of Product Marketing at Informatica for the Enterprise Data Catalog product. I'm going to be joined on this, speak, uh, on this webinar by two distinguished speakers from the Aberdeen Group and our customer Metal, whom I'll be introducing to you in a minute. We live in a world where enterprises are in varying stages of driving digital transformation of their businesses. These initiatives are driven by business objectives like driving innovation, improving customer service, enabling predictive analytics, and modernizing the infrastructure by moving their workloads and data to the cloud. No matter what their objective is, data underpins this transformation. And the ability to find and use the right data at the right time and having trust and confidence in the data is critical for the success of these initiatives. Which brings us to the theme for today's webinar, which is around how intelligent data catalogs are critical enablers for this transformation. I have two speakers with me who bring a wealth of insight to this topic from different perspectives. First, we have Michael Locke from the Aberdeen Group. As Senior Vice President and Principal Analyst, Mike is responsible for managing the strategic direction of Aberdeen's research coverage into both traditional and cutting-edge topic areas including analytics, business intelligence, Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence and machine learning, while maintaining oversight of 16 different research practice areas. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for joining us today. Then we have Neeraj Ravankar from Metal. Neeraj is Senior Manager, Global IT and BI Platforms at Metal, a multinational toy manufacturing company, and one of our customers. Neeraj is responsible for managing Metal's enterprise data management practice across the globe and empowering business users across, across 100 plus countries. He's currently leading Metal's digital transformation in the data analytics area using big data, Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence and machine learning based approach. You'll notice some common themes here. Uh, welcome, Neeraj. Thanks for joining us. This is the agenda for today's webinar. I'm going to hand over to Mike who will present findings and interesting insights from Aberdeen's groundbreaking primary research of data catalog users. Then Neeraj will bring this to life, sharing his perspectives and insights on how Metal is driving a data-driven transformation of their business. I'll come back to share some brief perspective from Informatica, followed by an open discussion and wrap-up. Without taking up any further time, I'll pass the microphone, so to speak, to Mike. Mike? Great. Well, th Thanks very much, Dharma, and uh, welcome to everyone joining us. Um, I'm excited to have the chance to speak with you today uh, for a couple of different reasons. First is sort of my standard acknowledgement for those in the user community. Perhaps you're familiar with Aberdeen, perhaps you're not, but essentially all of Aberdeen's research is fact-based, and the majority of the findings that I present are user-driven. So the insights that I gather and the conclusions that I draw are based on data gathered from people like you that have the experience using tools and technology related to big data and analytics. So thank you to those that have uh, participated in the research over the years. Also though, I've, I've covered uh, the analytics space now for, for more than 10 years and I've been witness to some pretty striking evolution, probably the biggest of which being the increased applicability and relevance of analytics to a wider group of users in a typical company. And what we're talking about today, the, the technology process and ideals of a data catalog, is very much tied to the success of an organization and their efforts to empower analytics across the organization and reach a, a higher level of analytics maturity. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, the concept of advancing analytics maturity with an intelligent data catalog. So to start things off here, what's going on in today's companies? As I mentioned, I've been covering the space for a while now. Many of these trends are relatively new, or at least have been evolving more, uh, more rapidly as of late, rather. So starting with the users themselves, what I'm seeing is an inflated sense of expectation on the part of these users when it comes to things like the ease of use of their analytics technologies, the speed at which they expect information to be delivered to them, and the usability and relevance of that information to their particular job role. 
At the same time, though, we're seeing an evolution and expansion in the supporting technologies that are more relevant to this audience, as well as different architectures to support them. So tools like interactive data discovery and search, um, enhanced analytics tools like AI and machine learning, a lot of technology evolution here. And then underlying all of this is an increased diversity and richness of data available. So we seem to have stopped talking about big data as a challenge that needs to be solved and really more as an opportunity to pull game-changing insights out of this pool of information from external third-party data to unstructured social media information. Very, very diverse foundation of data that companies are drawing from these days. So this data is still relatively new here. It comes from my mo most recent big data survey. Here, looking at the top challenges companies face, broken down here by user type. So, um, not surprisingly, IT, um, shown in the in the gray at the top, is most challenged by resource constraints. So you've got you got a lot of data that you're managing. You, um, you're close to the data. You're responsible for um, collecting, distributing it, making sure it's usable and well governed. Um, the companies are finding a hard time trying to manage the uh, finding enough resources to manage the data um, and do the things with it that their organization wants to do. Whereas when you think about the people that are charged with leveraging the data for creating insights, people like data scientists, um, business analysts, um, they're really most challenged by this notion of the data silos. So where you've got data that you could be using for analysis being locked away within a functional a departmental silo, like in marketing or finance or sales or, or operations or wherever it might be, the inability to get at the data that they need is a real challenge uh, for the companies that are really trying to do um, the, the most innovative work with that data, um, which also happens to be uh, something that's that's a pretty big challenge for the line of business as well. So as more user types and more job roles become active with data, um, you know they look to to pull in data from different parts of the company, and they're finding challenges with that. So just to take a step back here before I talk through the rest of the findings, I wanted to talk um, through Aberdeen's research methodology, just really put things into context a little bit better. So there's really two parts to the Aberdeen methodology. The, the first is what we call the PACE methodology, and it's all about understanding the end user. Um, we ask questions around these four areas that you see here, pressures, actions, capabilities, and enablers. So what are the pressures that, um, that are driving them to act when it comes to technology? What are the actions that they're taking in the response to those pressures? What capabilities are they are they developing and building within their organization to help uh, better execute on on their strategy? And what technologies by category are they employing to help to help round out that strategy and and um, and deliver results from from uh, whatever endeavor it is that we're talking about in this case analytics. So that's the first half of the methodology, really understanding what's going on and how are people thinking and acting when it comes to technology. The second half of the methodology involves understanding performance. So now that we've sort of gotten into the minds of the user, we want to understand how they're performing as a result. So we, we ask them questions around different uh, areas of, of uh, performance, metrics like organizational goals, employee performance, financial metrics, things like revenue and, and profitability. Um, we score all of our respondents based on a given analysis, based on how they respond in aggregate to those questions. The ones that, that score in the top 20% are what we call the best in class, the middle 50% of the industry average, and then the bottom 30% are the laggards. Really, the research is all about understanding, let's profile best in class performance. What is what does that performance actually look like? But what are all, what are some of the other defining characteristics that make up a best-in-class strategy, and how can we help other companies emulate that behavior to try to improve their performance? So let's get jump into the more of the data here and talk through some of the the specifics about this modern data environment that uh, that I keep talking about here. One of the key questions that I always ask in my surveys is around timely data. Um, how often do you do you receive the information that you need? Well, first, how quickly do you need information and how often do you get it on time? And there's a couple things of note here. If you're comparing um, this survey launched at the end of last year, 
so still relatively recently with uh, two years prior. What we're seeing is, is, a, is a narrowing of, of what we call this decision window. So the, the period of time during which a piece of information can, can really impact a business decision. For some types of decision makers, that, that window of time might be a day. Uh, it could be a week for some more strategic decision makers. But what we're seeing is that there are a lot more um, every day, multiple times a day, decision windows that, come, that, 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 that uh, users have. So I need information by the end of the day, now I, now I need it by noon. Or I need it within the hour, now I need it within 10 minutes. Sometimes even approaching real time or near real time. Um, and so com there are more companies today that are reporting uh, a decision window in the, in the real time or near real time window or within the hour as opposed to, to uh, two years ago. So the, the decision window is shrinking. Um, but more importantly, how often is the information delivered within that decision window, whether we're talking about a week or an hour or a minute? Um, a lot of the time, in fact, 33% of the time, according to the research, about a third of critical information is delivered late. So um, outside of that decision window before the opportunity can really be acted upon. Uh, so that's a real challenge for companies is, is trying to get information into the hands of their users in a timely way. Another um, uh, perhaps unsurprising challenge that companies see is around data complexity. So what we're seeing is outside of the traditional structured data coming from applications and data warehouses and, and sort of uh, traditional um, sources of information, a lot of companies are employing some of these less tradi traditional sources, um, external data from third parties, uh, location geospatial data, unstructured data from social channels or wherever it might come from, uh, of course, device or sensor data from the Internet of Things. More and more non-traditional data is in use. Um, companies on average are dealing with uh, 35 unique data sources under management that they, that they, that they could, could be accessing for the purposes of analysis. Uh, and that number is, is averaged across all company sizes, by the way. So for large enterprises, that number would be much higher. Um, uh, the, the challenge, though, is that a lot of those, again, almost a third of those data sources are inaccessible. So it's great to have access um, to the application that serves your particular functional area. But when you try to perform an analysis that um, needs to incorporate data from other areas of the organization, a lot of the times that data is, is not accessible. And that's a real challenge for companies as they try to innovate with their analytics and become more mature in that regard. So in, in response to some of those challenges, what we see is that more companies today are putting time and effort and investment into their data infrastructure um, in a few different dimensions that we're, that we're seeing here. So they're investing in technologies that can help them capture and integrate, assimilate and process more of that data more rapidly, really in an effort to combat the shrinking decision window and get the right information to the right people in time. So tools like data prep to cleanse and blend more information, of course, data catalog, what we're, we're, we're talking about today, to help rapidly and, and more intuitively organize their information, help speed up access to an increasingly diverse foundation of data. Uh, then on the process side, what I'm seeing in the, in the research is that companies are getting much more serious, much more active with the governance and oversight of their data. So where at one point, most companies would have reported having weak or loose policies for governance that were sort of poorly communicated and enforced. Now we've got a situation where 70% of companies have a formal approach to governance, some supported by dedicated technology, others more process and, and policy based, um, but still taking it much more seriously these days. So companies are trying to build more maturity into their data environment. The big part of the reason that they're doing that um, is to help in enable more of their users and empower more of their users. Problem being, of course, today, there's, a, there's, a, there's sort of this marked lack of satisfaction among the user community. So, you know, typical um, line of business decision makers, marketing directors and sales managers and finance managers and, and people from all over the organization that are not necessarily, don't have statistical um, analysis PhDs, um, but they're curious about their business and how to make better data-driven decisions. What we're finding is that a lot of times they're, they're more likely to be dissatisfied or indifferent 
um, with some of these key aspects of that data environment. So their ability to access the data in a self-service capacity without over-reliance on IT, um, the sophistication or, or what I call firepower of their analytics capabilities, the ease of use of their, of their data systems, the, the, the speed of information delivery, it's all wrapped up in, in sort of the same concept of, uh, of, of lack of satisfaction in multiple uh, facets of their data environment. So a, a challenging environment for users, given the, the lack of timeliness and the, and the, and the diversity and, and complexity of their data environments. So let's turn uh, more specifically here toward the data catalog and, and talk about how it helps support analytics maturity. So I asked this question specifically in my most recent survey um, for those that had taken strides to invest in a data catalog, what are, what are some of the reasons why they do this? At the top of the list is this notion of data clarity. This is a, a common complaint for companies. So they, they don't really know what they have when it comes to their data environment. They know they've got a data warehouse and they know they've got a bunch of applications, maybe several spreadsheets. What they don't really understand though is the nature of these sources and what they can do with the data. It's hard to understand how much of it is there. Um, you know, they want to understand, they want to get better clarity and visibility into that data. Um, and, and that's really the top driver for investment in a data catalog. The other two cited on here are also really important, very much related to the first driver. So we talked about governance before. Companies see data catalog as a way to help support better oversight and sort of track and traceability of their data. And then with profiling, they want to understand more rapidly what, what's their tip, what are their typical data sets, what's in there, how big, how clean are they or, or, or not, what are some of the key fields that they're going to be using in their analysis. They use data catalog to help answer these questions more rapidly and, and provide access to that, to that increasingly diverse foundation of data. So now we can, we can start to compare the companies that have a data catalog to those that, that haven't yet made the investment of time and resources yet. Um, when we make that comparison, some interesting insights merge out of the data here. First of all, those with a data catalog we find are, are more organizationally mature. So they may be investing in more technology, but they're also taking the time to put the right processes in place to help support those investments. Things like processes to help non-technical business users connect with the data they need, procedures to help support the sharing of data across business functions, increasing the fluidity of data, but also um, initiatives that they put in place to help develop analytical talent, the skills necessary to use more of that data uh, for some of those newer and more sophisticated analyses that they're, that they're trying to perform. So with the right technology and process in place, what we find is that these users are now able to perform uh, first when it comes to the users themselves. We saw before how companies see data latency as a big challenge. They want to use more of their data. They want to do it without over-reliance on IT, as I, as I said before. Well, the research shows how companies that have put a data catalog um, in place, they're seeing elevated levels of user satisfaction across these three areas. So more than twice as likely to report being satisfied with the speed of information delivery, the ease of use of their data systems, their ability to access that data in a self-service capacity. So much more likely to be empowered with better data um, and, a, and a more fluid data environment uh, for those users. And then there are the metrics that we like to point to all the time. So the, the business scoreboard, as I like to call it, what the research is showing is that a, a very, it, a, showing a, a really very demonstrable correlation between the usage of data catalog technology and some of these crit critical business metrics. So they invest in the right technologies. They work to make data more fluid across their organization, but they do it in a responsibly governed way. They deliver on user needs for faster data and more relevant data to their job roles. And what that ultimately leads to is increased performance. Almost twice the year-over-year -year growth in organic revenue, 
significantly higher improvement in customer satisfaction, increase in operating profit, and growth in, in the total customer base as well. So some real business impact that we're seeing here for companies that have made the investment in data catalog. So just to close out here with some final thoughts, some of the key takeaways that are coming out of my research. First is one that I always find myself talking about, but it bears repeating. Managing big data is a challenge, but more companies today see it as an opportunity, um, an opportunity to find game-changing insights within their data. They try to combat their biggest challenges like resource constraints, lack of accessibility, um, you know, increased time urgency, uh, they, they try to manage those and, and, and uh, combat those really in order to capitalize on the hidden opportunities for insight in their data. Um, secondly, when you, when you look at the usage of data catalog technology, it's not just an investment in technology, but more of a philosophy that helps advance the maturity of analytics at those companies. They put the right processes in place to help support faster information delivery and improved ease of use among other things. And then ultimately, that analytics maturity helps drive performance. Not only are they achieving a more efficient analytics environment, but that environment helps boost some, some critical metrics like profitability, revenue growth, and, and customer growth as well. So that brings me to the end of my portion of the presentation. Thanks again for, to those that are joining us. What I want to do now is hand things off to Neeraj from, from Mattel, who can help uh, make this real for us and, and help us understand better um, the user perspective here. Neeraj? Thank you, Michael and, and Dharma. Um, and Somatica has been a, a valued partner for Mattel over the years and has supported um, our technology needs in the data management space. So Dharma, thanks for inviting me. Um, hello, and my name is uh, Niraj Shrivankar, and I'm a senior manager here at Mattel um, in our global technology organization. Mattel, uh, as some of you may know, designs, manufactures, and markets some of the most beloved toy brands and family products. We have a, a rich library of power brands such as Barbie, Hot Wheels, American Girl, Thomas and Friends, as well as Fisher Price. Uh, Mattel is also global um, and is, um, has a presence in pretty much every continent. So, um, as you can imagine, there's tons of data, there's complex systems, um, and data interactions. And add to that all the different sources of data that Michael talked about unstructured, social, IoT, etc. So the goal of my organization is to simplify the backend processes and provide a easy to use and robust platform for analytics. Now, the impact of data on business performance has significantly increased over the last few years. And as an organization, we needed to meet this growing demand. Um, so what have we done? Over the last couple of years, uh, we've been working on a roadmap to support our um, overall uh, Mattel structural simplification program and, and its long-term vision by um, leading Mattel's transformation in the data and analytics area. And some of those key drivers that drove our strategy were um, rooting decisions in data and insight. This was a top-down imperative that really drove our data management and governance initiative as well as sponsorship. Um, from a business perspective, and Michael touched a little bit about it, was it was not just about making data sets available to the business, but also providing data on the set, on the data set, so that they can drive innovation in their areas. And we're able to um, build models, analytical models, through self-service. The business was hungry for advanced analytics, and it was important that they had um, access to not just data, but the glossary on demand as well. And as an organization, there was a desire for both the business and technology to collaborate and unlock the business value of our data. From a tech organization, um, I think it was key for us to do more with less. It was important that we invested in a tool set that high, had high automation capabilities and low um, total cost of ownership. Now, the tools had to integrate seamlessly for us to avoid additional costs because some of these data governance um, programs can be costly. 
And finally, from a BI organization standpoint, we wanted to provide the right set of data at the right um, time. It was about progressing along the BI maturity curve and providing a platform for predictive and recommendation-based insights. So the key outcome of our strategy was twofold. While we had um, a robust reporting and dashboard-based BI solution serving um, a significant portion of our power users, we needed a modern data platform to drive some of the new advanced analytical requirements. To complement the strategy, it was important that we implement a holistic data governance practice with a focus on formal data governance and a technology platform for data quality, data lineage, and business glossary. Okay, so this essentially based um, uh, formed the basis of a, a data governance vision that had an enterprise-wide um, framework supporting it and technology playing a key role in the enablement. At the same time, we began formalizing our processes, our meeting cadences, our organizational roles and responsibilities, and ingrain data governance in our IT operating model. So why a data catalog? As I mentioned earlier, a key component of our vision was um, the data catalog. In the past, we've tried to maintain one, but with the explosion of data, it was both difficult and costly to maintain and manage it at scale. It was pretty evident during our um, roadmap discussions, um, interviews with the business that there was a lot of data, but there were very few folks that could actually navigate through it. And it, it was pretty evident that uh, what they were looking for was more data training as opposed to tool training. So um, I, the main benefit of, of this program at Mattel was to provide complete visibility and lineage of our data analytics systems. And I had mentioned earlier, we are building a modern big data platform, and we wanted to ensure that we avoid a data swamp. We did not want to just put the data out there for the sake of it, uh, but we wanted to make an informed decision on what data sets we need and how we put a framework in place to govern the data while at the same time democratizing it. It's a unique challenge. We talked about how our business was eager to perform advanced analytics. The data science organizations provide competitive edge and in most cases, time to market is key. To spend more time searching for data is unproductive. Um, so it was important for us to be able to provide self-service BI to these, these organizations. A key um, compliance and IT rationalization initiatives could be fast-tracked with the availability of metadata and lineage. So with the recent SPADA regulations, there's going to be an even greater push to catalog our data assets. So that's some of the key reasons why we were looking at an enterprise-wise data catalog. Now, what are the key features that we're looking for? In line, where, in line with our goal to work more efficiently, we wanted out-of-the-box scanners and automation built into these tools. Remember, I mentioned that we've done this, tried to do this in the past, but it was always a challenge to maintain the, the data currency. We did not want to spend time and effort to manually maintain it. An Informatica EDC tool did provide a rich library of scanners that included legacy and cloud apps. It had to be scalable too, considering the volume of data that we we're going to bring in. I'm going to talk a little bit about it during the benefit that we just finished scanning um, over 5 million assets. We had to add another node, increase the load type in just over a month after we went live. So scalability is a key factor that we as we roll this out to an enterprise-wide audience. We talked about best of suite products. Informatica has the tool, the suite of tools to satisfy our needs. AI-based features is all, always going to be um, important and key as we crowdsource this. Our hope is that we push this to um, some of our key system analysts and business analysts and have them um, provide more information and, cap and we want to capture the information in, in EDC. Now, the AI-based features are still work in progress, but the pattern discovery is something we want to work in the near future as well. So with um, some solid homework, evaluation, and research, we embarked on our data governance journey. Um, we picked one domain and built it from scratch and delivered, delivered the first release in approximately 13 weeks. It was quite an achievement. 
since then, we've really accelerated our program. We've added a few more domains, and we continue to enhance and fine-tune our approach. So looking at the outcomes and the benefits, as you can see, some of these did move the needle here at Mattel. From a process and organization standpoint, the establishment of a formal data governance office was huge. We now see a strong collaboration with the business, with, with the technology uh, driving efficiency. Data is in, and integrity is being delivered through IDQ. The data lineage and metadata through EDC and governance and data stewardship through Axon. So as you can see, the best of suite approach really worked well for us. Um, and what's next? What, we have a lot in store. Um, we, we will continue to um, add new domains, enhance our offerings in the cloud, um, use um, compliance and security facets of the data governance tools that we haven't used yet. Um, but as I see, as I can, I can see, this is probably the first time I've actually seen both developers and business excited about data governance. I will say this, um, data governance has always been hard, time consuming, and probably not as shiny. But Informatica with EDC has taken it to the next level, and I'm, I'm really excited to see how this shapes the next gen analytics. So this, I conclude my portion of the webinar, and um, I'll hand it back over to Dharma. Thanks, Aniraj, uh, and thanks again, as Mike said earlier, for bringing this to life for us through your real-world uh, user perspective. Uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes providing uh, some Informatica perspective on how we address the key capabilities for intelligent data catalog uh, to address the business requirements uh, for large enterprise customers like, like Metal. As you just heard from Mike and Neeraj, data cataloging is emerging as a critical enabler for enterprises' digital transformation journeys. Uh, just to highlight a few examples from our customers along the lines of what Neeraj talked about earlier, a global financial services company used the discovery and tagging capabilities of Informatica's enterprise data catalog to identify key data elements that they wanted to govern and protect as part of the data governance program. A national retail company has implemented a data lake for their data scientists to develop models for advanced predictive analytics. The data catalog enabled them to significantly reduce the time it took for data scientists to find relevant data and enable a much higher level of self-service, you know, along the lines of you know, what Mike talked about earlier around the challenge of having visibility into data across the enterprise. A regional healthcare company is using the data catalog to improve data visibility as they grow through M&A and leveraging integrated data to deliver new services that improve quality of patient care. An enterprise-scale intelligent data catalog is an essential requirement for all modern data management projects, as we discussed in the last slide, because it allows enterprises to categorize and classify all its data assets across cloud and on-premises, across traditional databases, and big data stores and data lakes. A data catalog helps in understanding of the relationships between data sets, the quality of the data, where the data is coming from, how it's used, and the business context of the data. Now to take a brief look at Informatica's Enterprise Data Catalog, which is an intelligent data catalog powered by the metadata-driven intelligence of what we call our Clare platform, which is our AI engine that's built on top of a common metadata foundation. I'm gonna quickly highlight a few key capabilities of EDC, and Neil has actually touched on this uh, eloquently uh, in his uh, presentation earlier. Uh, first, it has broad and deep metadata connectivity to a rich variety of systems across databases, big data systems, files, BI and ETL tools, and, and various enterprise applications. It provides a simple Google-like search to allow users to search and find relevant data for their business needs. This is a very important capability because often the users of the catalog are non-technical users like data analysts and business analysts and data scientists. Uh, it tracks relationships among data objects to understand dependencies and lineage of the data, which reflects the flow of data across enterprise systems. All these capabilities are enabled by powerful machine learning based data identification, tagging, classification, and similarity detection. Collaboration and social curation capabilities allow enterprises to leverage shared data knowledge and the combined power of AI 
and human expertise, which is also an equally important facet of the value that's uh, brought to bear by a data catalog. Finally, all of the metadata and operations of the catalog are open and exposed via APIs to integrate into the tools and solution of the choice in the enterprise's data architecture. Now I'm going to take a quick deeper look at some of these key capabilities. Informatica ADC provides a holistic view of data assets uh, uh, by pro automatically discovering relationships between data sets across multiple dimensions, uh, providing a summary view as well as detailed lineage views that show where the data is coming from, and capture dependencies to understand the impact of changes across data sets, resources, and users. Uh, Neeraj talked about using the data catalog uh, to manage the metadata across all of the enterprise data assets and using that to rationalize uh, data assets. Uh, and, and doing impact analysis is, is a very important aspect of, of that uh, charter. For large enterprises with millions of uh, data assets, both structured and unstructured that's distributed across the enterprise, AI and ML capabilities play a critical role. Uh, AI and machine learning driven curation and enrichment of the data is essential to enabling data cataloging and discovery at this scale. Uh, some of the ways in which EDC leverages AI and ML include automatic identification of data domains and entities, automatic detection of similar columns, and automatic association of you know, business terms and definitions to physical data sets which eliminates a tedious manual process for data stewards which is a very important step in establishing a data governance program for enterprises. As powerful as these AI-driven capabilities are, uh, it's also equally important to complement this with shared data knowledge and human expertise that's distributed across the enterprise. And often this data knowledge is also siloed, just like data itself is siloed across the enterprise. In EDC, data owners and subject matter experts can certify data assets, uh, data consumers can rate and review data, data sets, and intelligent search facets allow users to narrow down their search by searching for only certified data sets or assets with a rating of four stars and above, for instance. And in a virtuous cycle, all of this human input can make the platform even more intelligent, enabling more automation and delivering more relevant search results with richer contextual information. And as I mentioned earlier, all of this is made possible by the broad and deep metadata connectivity that we have through our metadata scanners to uh, support traditional databases, cloud and big data platforms, file systems, BI tools, ETL tools, and various types of enterprise applications, both on-premise as well as SaaS applications. Now I'd like to bring Mike and Neeraj back into the discussion. I'm gonna start by asking Mike this uh, question. About the role of AI and ML in cataloging, it is implicit in some of your findings, though you didn't explicitly touch on this. This plays a very important role in an enterprise scale data catalog, as I mentioned earlier, and Neeraj also you know, talked about this. Wondering if you can share some additional thoughts and perspective on, on this, Mike. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think um, you know the, the ideals of AI and machine learning capabilities um, are going to be really interesting as they play out in in the world of big data and analytics, and and it's it's mainly because what they do um, in many cases, or at least the promise of of machine learning technology, is that it, is that you can you can empower someone who's who is less technical um, with abilities of someone that is highly technical. So. The way that it would, the, the reason that it's important within data catalog and data management is because of some of the things that I was talking about before. So, you know, 10 years ago when I was covering analytics at the at the beginning of of my stint here, um, you know, people were already talking about self service BI, and really what that meant was self service ability of reports and dashboards, people creating their own views of the data um, based on what's available. Um, now that's still um, that's still a goal for a lot of companies, but what? But more and more, what we're seeing is is that typical user that back then might have been struggling to figure out how to create their own dashboard. They're now the ones that are getting more active with the data itself. 
So they're, they're looking to incorporate different types of data into their analysis. They're looking into, at other applications and other systems across the organization to try to enrich their analysis with the best data. But they don't have necessarily the skills to connect to that data to, if there are transformations to be done, um, if there are things that need to happen to that data in order to make it more usable for them. They, they don't have the technical skills to do that. And that's, I think, where AI machine learning can come in. It can offer recommendations as to how to transform the data. It can show users which sources are the most popular, the most commonly accessed. It can, it can, do, it can provide a number of different um, services for the typical user that would typically be outside of their um, scope of capabilities. Um, but with, with machine learning and AI, it sort of connects the, the, the user that has the business knowledge with the, the, the technical knowledge they need to do their analysis. So I think it, I'm, I'm really interested to see how this all plays out, um, you know, over the next few months and years as, as, it be, as machine learning becomes more and more of a factor in some of these more data-centric type of activities. I don't know. Um, uh, Neeraj, does that, does that follow along with what you've seen in your organization and some of the users that, 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 that you've been um, supporting and, and working with? Yeah, I think um, it's one of the key aspects, actually, of the collaboration um, that, that I just touched upon. What we are finding is that um, there are groups of uh, business units that almost own a certain set of data and are really good with using um, their portion of the data, um, creating you know uh, reports, analytics, etc. But there's other groups that need similar type of information, but they don't know who to go to, right? And they don't know if that data is trustworthy. But if then if if the data owners or, or um, um, the, some of the key um, data analysts um, either certify the use of the data or provide um, information on how that data set can be used, then there's greater usability across our business area. So that's why it was key for us to build a catalog with, with some of these key um, data stewards information so that you know people know who to go to and people are people trust um, the data the the other aspect of it is I think um, even from an IT perspective uh, one of the things that we are looking at is how can we easily identify similar sets of data across the systems as we are upgrading our backend systems um, mm -hmm. this pro proliferation of data um, how do we get a handle of, over it so that we could do some uh, impact analysis and basically try and control the sprawl? Because what you're going to find is if you put an enterprise data catalog over um, uh, huge sets of data, things can get lost. And, and one of the things that I'm hoping AI and machine learning can help, especially with the pattern um, detection and discovery, is to be able to find that redundant sets of data that we could either retire um, or, um, or decommission. So again, I think, yes, like to your point, I think there's, there's a couple of different use cases. We've been looking at both of it and I think um, I'm really excited about um, some of the features that EDC brings to bear. Yeah, that, that's a really interesting perspective, Neeraj. And in fact, uh, you know, one of the common themes we are seeing across many of our customers is, you know, in terms of the value uh, delivered by catalog, it's something as simple as being able to provide quick and easy visibility into who are the, you know, the data owners or the subject matter experts uh, for a data set or a certain data domain, right? It's, it's something as simple as just providing that quick guide so that users know who to go to to get their questions answered. So I think, you know, what you said, you know, seems to resonate pretty strongly with what we heard across many of our uh, uh, customers. Uh, I also wanted to, you know, ask you, Neeraj, about uh, a different aspect of, you know, what Mike uh, touched on. You know, Mike talked about the growing pressures that enterprises face around the, the decision window narrowing, you know, go, going from, you know, weeks 
or months to you know days and you know sometimes you know real time or near real time uh, and i'm just curious to get a perspective on you know how you balance that pressure with the need to you know address you know data governance and compliance requirements and, and provide confidence and trust in uh, in the data for users while supporting this narrowing a decision window for you know driving business decisions Right, I think that's a very good question, and I, I talked, talked a little bit about that, right? So we want to democratize data. We want folks to do self-service BI, but at the same time, we want to govern our assets, right? So um, it is a difficult problem to solve. I think um, uh, the real-time uh, requirement is pretty real, and we are doing some um, predictive and prescriptive recommendation-based insights, um, uh, some solutions, and part of it is, you know, this impacts revenue, this impacts our, our bottom line in some cases. So um, it is key that we help the business. I know data governance as a, a practice is, is important, but then um, we need to also be able to uh, meet the customer needs um, because there's a, an impact. Um, the way we, we've tried to do this is um, through our data lake infrastructure where um, we're looking at a, a real-time slash patch-based uh, data integration, uh, flexibility in data integration so that we can provide the uh, access to the data as and when the team needs it. And the glossary is um, focused on the data discovery and the data analytics layer of our data lake, which um, becomes easier to manage. So um, so while we have two different tracks, um, that are, there's a one track that's kind of meeting the, the business need, the other track is then complementing, um, complementing it by, by, like I said, building those automated scanners, um, uploading the business glossary, um, and keeping that data currency fresh. Thanks, Neeraj. Again, it's it's really you know insightful to understand how uh, you know you're leveraging many aspects of your data architecture to address you know sometimes these conflicting needs around enabling uh, greater agility for the business and supporting real-time decisions based on data while uh, you know supporting the, the the need for you know appropriate data governance. Wrapping up, uh, download your copy of the Aberdeen White Paper. You know, everybody who registered for this webinar should receive a follow-up email with information on how to uh, get, get this white paper on the topic of the Intelligent Data Catalog, a foundation for analytical excellence. Uh, many of the data points that Mike covered on the webinar today are covered in this uh, white paper. And also visit Informatica's website to learn more about Informatica's Enterprise Data Catalog uh, product. Thank you all for joining us on this webinar today.